Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Naha podcast with conference speaker Dorothy Bell Poli. Hello, Dorothy. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for being with us. Um, we're so excited to have you as a speaker in Salt Lake City this year for the 2023 <laughs> Beyond Aromatics Conference. Today, we just want to go over some, you know, questions for you and get some history of your aromatherapy career and um, introduce you to our members as a conference speaker. Okay, that sounds great. So first and foremost, I'd just like to ask, what was your first introduction to aromatherapy? So I've been teaching for about 25 years, I guess now. And in that time frame, I've taught a lot of courses about uh, plant ethnobotany, plant medicines, uh, culture and, and plants. And over those years, I've uh, really kind of boned up on my herbalism concepts, but I never really uh, had a strong grasp of aromatherapy. So during the 2020 stay at home marathon that we all went through. Oh, um, recently. Yeah. I, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. I took a formal co course with Aroma Head and um, partly to give me something to do and to kind of continue to learn about plants. And uh, I'm very grateful that I did it. Okay, that's awesome. So something during the pandemic, you decided, you know, you had heard about aromatherapy and, and plant therapy so often during your career. Um, and you decided it was time to take a serious look at it. Yeah, pretty much because I really wanted to bring more of that into my courses. Uh, students were really getting excited when I would talk about plant chemistry and how we understand how um, that chemistry helps us uh, heal. And the more they were asking questions, the more I needed to dive deeper into what I was learning. So the aromatherapy training really did help me uh, answer their questions. Uh, the on the side note is that I own Blue Bear Natural Skincare which is a company that came out of a student project and it's a, a soap company really more than anything. Um, but using that training from my aromatherapy certification, I was able to take that into the business as well. So it's been twofold of a positive training and very useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And it is true that I'm sure a lot of your students had um, grasped onto aromatherapy and were looking for more knowledge because it's something that is very accessible to a lot of people, beginners and um, professionals alike. And uh, that's awesome that you were able to, uh, you know, beef up your aromatherapy knowledge recently and, and add it to your courses for your students. My next question was going to be, why did you decide to add a focus on aromatherapy into your evolutionary biology studies? And uh, that kind of answers it, but do you have anything else to add um, on to that? Sure. I mean, um, evolution, evolution education, evolution um, research, all of that's connected to the concept of understanding how plants come to be and how they're continuously changing over time. And I'm really interested in how people have impacted plants and how plants have impacted people. That's an important question for me um, from a professional perspective, but just out of a curiosity perspective, humans have this beautiful connection to nature and then also a very destructive connection to nature. So understanding how plants are changing because of our choices, um, is definitely a hot topic for this generation. And I really think that the aromatherapy perspective is useful for them to see a real world application that, hey, different plants um, have different compounds in them, but the same species can actually be incredibly different from location to location based on how the environment's playing a role. So um, scholarly, uh, from a scholar perspective, this was so crucial for me to bring into a classroom, but also because I'm super curious. Wow, <clears throat> that's awesome. And, you know, we have so many curious members and uh, other speakers at the conference are covering topics of, you know, historical aromatherapy or um, aromatherapy and conservation um, efforts or, you know, 
deep dives into the science of aromatherapy. And I think all of that really connects to what you're saying here is that aromatherapy is an extremely complex subject that, you know, deserves our attention. And um, it, it matches up with evolutionary biology in an important way. Yeah, absolutely. hundred <laughs> percent. So you took a course from Aroma Head in 2020, and I was going to ask you, how did you become involved with Naha? And was it through that education or through some other means? Yeah, it was totally through that education. And um, I wrote my paper for my certification. And when I wrote it, my person that was looking at it, um, the educator on the other end of the computer, she said, hey, this is really good. You should think about maybe so submitting this um, for publication. So I took that paper and I pulled it apart. And they were my first two publications for Naha. Um, after I did the first two, I was very interested in bringing more science to the organization. I think that the more that the average aromatherapist really understands what's going on inside the plant, uh, they can legitimize what they're doing. So especially in the hard sciences, when you tell someone, hey, you're also an aromatherapist, they kind of give you that weird look. And I don't mm -hmm. like that because there's so much good science here. Uh, and then when I show them, hey, I read all these papers, I had to do all this stuff, this was not easy. And, um, you know, then I have colleagues that are having a problem with their shoulder or their hip or, you know, their sinuses are giving them a problem. And I go home and I make them something up and I take it in. And, and they're like, hey, tell me more about these plants. Uh, so I feel like it's doing a service to the field as a whole, but I also think it brings mm -hmm. plant biology to true light and gives people some confidence in what they're talking about with clients and patients. Yeah, and that's really interesting. And I'm sure many aromatherapists, uh, Naha members know what you mean by that. When, when they tell somebody that they are an aromatherapist, um, you know, some people probably look at them a little differently and, and maybe judge them and think that that's might be silly, but it's so funny because there's, you know, work like, um, that we have a conference speaker, um, Jesse Hawkins and the Franklin Institute and Naha is sponsoring these big studies to, to prove things about the compounds inside lavender or, or how our new one is how essential oils affect respiratory systems. And, mm -hmm. and these studies are large um, peer reviewed professional studies that are proving important things about um, aromatherapy. And I think that the work that you and many others are doing is very important. Yeah, it's, it's, important to me enough as an educator to, to continue to stay attached to Naha and writing for the journal and, and speaking. But it also is something that I've brought into my research agenda at, at work, where I have students now studying some psychological effects of um, different uh, essential oils. And then I have another student that's interested in very specific oils, um, just understanding the chemistry better and I have a third student who's really interested in dentistry. And so I said, well, how have you thought about essential oils with dentistry? Because where you want to practice as a dentist when you finish going through dental school is going to be pretty low income. And you're going to want to have options for those clients that come in to see you. And so, you know, it, it's something that I'm, I'm really starting to try to train the next generation to be literate to understand that 70% of our world still uses plants as their primary medication mm -hmm. and that there is legitimate science here that needs to be understood better. And it's only going to happen if we give it some credence and allow people to start kind of exploring truly in a scientific fashion uh, mm -hmm. with things that we kind of know from, you know, culture, culture yeah. medicine. That's yeah. funny because my first um, experience with aromatherapy was is actually one of my first experiences in life, being that my great grandmother would use essential oils for many things. So, you know, one of my first memories is just the smell of eucalyptus oil or something like that, because um, she knew 
that it was helpful and she was helping our family. And there's there's many cultural aspects to aromatherapy. And I think it's very important that the work is done to show the scientific benefits as well. Absolutely. Um, we have students, I mean, I, I teach on a college campus, right? I taught through the pandemic. So understanding some essential oils uh, that help students deal with test anxiety and just general not being able to sleep or GI problems because in their early 20s, they start having GI issues from not eating well during their teenage years. Uh, mm -hmm. Having some of these things that you can recommend um, really is useful um, from a daily aspect and a, and a way to showcase that plants can be used as a healing tool um, it's a great recruiting tool for getting more people into the sciences and into just plant biology as a whole and legitimizing what big pharma has kind of destroyed over the years. Um, the reputation mm -hmm. that, that is attached to herbalism and aromatherapy is, is not as good as it should be. Um, and scientists know this but there isn't enough plant biologists that are really kind of versed in this realm. So I, I take it as a, a very serious time for me in my career. I'm at a place where I can be a little more creative in what I'm doing with my research. And I'm bringing in as many students as I can to uh, take on big questions. And they're excited. That excitement is a breath of fresh air in a career <laughs> that, that's mm -hmm. been around for a long time. And uh, it keeps me invigorated. It keeps me wanting to keep diving into the literature and to keep asking great questions. Um, and when you see a student go from a stressed out kid who's not eating well and not sleeping well to starting to heal and then become engaged with those plants, it's mm -hmm. Magic. <laughs> that that that's the magic part. The science is pretty yeah. straightforward, but the magic of watching them light up and become uh, so engaged that they want to study these things, um, to understand what is the chemistry inside of a plant. You know, getting a student mm -hmm. to take organic chemistry is like pulling teeth out of a rattlesnake. They don't want to do it. <laughs> but when you talk to them about plants and the chemistry that's inside of plants. Then they take organic chemistry with a totally different perspective right. and they're engaged with it at a level that they would have never been engaged with it otherwise. And from an educator's perspective, it's a, it's a win-win. Um, from mm -hmm. a plant lover's perspective, I'm finally growing people in uh, a field that they would normally not even pay attention to because everybody wants to help the cute furry animal. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to help the, the little yellow plant in the corner. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's fun to create experiences that bring students into a world that needs to be a little demystified and legitimized mm -hmm. uh, in such a way that the real sciences are super accepting and yeah. they should be. Yeah. And I th that's probably, that's kind of a beautiful way to, you have these students that are getting into organic chemistry and, you know, that's a lot of textbooks and, and yeah. tests and, <laughs> and hard work, but showing them how an essential oil or a plant actually works in person it makes it real it makes the work that they're doing feel tangible um the oil exists <laughs> in their hand and and then they feel the effects and all the work that they're learning to do is is made real and i think that's really cool yeah we we want to we want them to understand topics like receptors and chemistry and benzene rings and and they learn these pieces but they never really see how it connects because we jump from example to example but when you use something like uh, aromatherapy plants and and the compounds inside of our favorite oils they really do attach to it uh, and they follow it all the way through they really try to pull the the concept from start to finish over four classes for example um, that's a very powerful piece. <laughs> so whoever thought sesquiterpenes could be that exciting outside of aromatherapy, it mm -hmm. is. Kids love them because they're like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> now I get it, Dr. Foley. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> the Eureka moment. <laughs>
And I'm sure for some um, of your students, you know, a uh, a lavender blend before a test has become their their favorite oil. And I just wanted to know, do you have a favorite oil uh, currently? Is there is there one of the moment or, or an all time favorite? I think I'm a frankincense girl. I really love frankincense, so I tend to put mm-hmm. it in everything. Um, but right now, I've I've been suffering with respiratory issue, and so peppermint and frankincense have been my best friends. So I would say those two are, they're my uh, favorites this day, <laughs> but mm-hmm. frankincense is always a favorite. Oh yeah. And you, you definitely cannot underplay the effect of it being your favorite. It, oh. it, it may <laughs> not have to do, or it, it probably does have to do with the specific, um, you know, scientific makeup of the oil, but the effect of your favorite smell is so powerful. And I'll go back to my great grandmother as an example. Um, All of the memories that are imbued inside of the smell of eucalyptus is a huge part of it. And it it also has the scientific effects, but there's, there's definitely the, the the effect of it being your favorite that is certainly powerful. Yeah. That connects directly to the the concept of evolution. So it's not only the plants that are evolving, we evolve uh, as well. And so the smell of something creates that beautiful connection to our mood, right? Um, Whether it's grandma's pie or skunk, you have that immediate response. Um, And so, yeah, those favorite essential oils are our favorites for strong scientific reasons. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that psychological play is, is fantastic. Wonderful. So I would just like to ask, what can our members expect to learn from your Beyond Aromatics presentation? Sure. Um, so my presentation is really looking at the evolution of essential oils across all plants. So that may seem super technical and I don't want it to be that way. I wanna walk people through the idea that when we think aromatherapy, we think flowering plants and that's a natural place to kind of think, but the reality is all plants have essential oils. And so I wanna walk people through the reasons why all plants have them, that plants are communicating with each other. Um, Essential oils are not there for humans. They were developed by the plant for the plant. So why? do they exist? Um, So everything from moss and other little tiny plants like liverworts and hornworts make essential oils. And they don't flower. They don't make seeds. They're not vascular. And we generally don't even notice them. Uh, And so they're communicating with one another. And they're communicating about all kinds of interesting things. Uh, So we'll get into a lot of that. Uh, And then walking you through kind of how that changed over time as plants start getting bigger and competing for more space and learning how to fight with one another as well as help each other. Um, Different essential oils seem to come into play. And over time that continues to modify all the way till we get to those pretty flowering plants that we really love like uh, ylang ylang and jasmine um, and then even into the fruit rinds. So I really want people to understand that botany. I want to take them on a journey where they walk with me through time, long time, (laughs) and I make it exciting and accessible and something that when they walk out and they go and they interact with the next person or client, they can say, you know what? There's a reason for this. Let me talk to you about that because it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm excited. Uh... (laughs) I can't wait to watch your presentation. That sounds amazing. And it's so interesting the way that certain compounds within essential oils and plants arise, whether it's to do with conditions of the environment or or what have you. And I think that the science behind it is so interesting and we need more people on the front lines, um, you know, figuring these things out and and turning it into presentations for the rest of us to uh to be able to consume so i thank you for that and i thank you for being here with me today Uh, i'm so excited for beyond aromatics 2023 me too me too i look forward to seeing everyone okay dorothy thank you so much for being with us today and uh thank you everyone for listening we're gonna have many more of these speaker podcasts just so that everybody can get to know our Beyond Aromatics 2023 speakers before the day of the event.
Thank you.